Hi everyone, this is Vanessa with the latest updated of ASEAN News and here they are. Heavy rains cause flooding in central part of Myanmar. Video posted on social media shows Madi West High Water in the streets of P.O. Luin Town in central Myanmar after continuous heavy rain lashed the area. On the same day, muddy water flowing at that Tao Gaint waterfall in Myanmar after heavy rain. There are no reports of casualties, but the Myanmar Fire Department sent rescue crews to the worst hit areas and posted photographs of people being helped to higher ground. Residents of the hill station located about 70 km east of Mandalay says it rained for nearly 9 hours from 1 am and that they had never seen such serious flooding before. Indonesian president's visit to China is beneficial to ASEAN. According to Michael Tenet, Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN, that the strengthening of Indonesia-Chinese relations is beneficial not only to the two countries, but to ASEAN as a whole. Tenet made the remarks in an interview with China Global Television Network following Indonesian President Joko Widodo's visit to China. The strengthening of bilateral relations between each of our member states with our partners, including in this case uh, China, uh, of course uh, will uh, contribute significantly in terms of the uh, relationship between ASEAN and China, uh, be uh, as ASEAN as a group. So the, the strengthening of the bilateral relations between our uh, member uh, states, ASEAN member states with China, it will complement and uh, uh, further strengthen the uh, relationship between China and ASEAN uh, together. And I'm sure that w uh, the result of the visit will be beneficial not only for the bilateral relation between ASEAN, uh, between Indonesia and China, but also between China and ASEAN as a whole. Meanwhile, analysts says Indonesian President Joko Widodo is the first foreign leader received by China since the conclusion of the Beijing Winter Olympics in February. And China is the first stop of Joko Widodo's East Asian tour, which points to the closeness between the two countries. According to the official data, bilateral trade between China and Indonesia surpassed 120 billion United States dollars in 2021, up 58.6% year on year, which is the fastest trade growth between China and any of the 10 ASEAN countries. Indonesia and South Korea expand cooperation on new capital city projects. Indonesia expands a cooperation agreement with South Korea related to the construction of a new capital city on Borneo Island to replace overcrowded Jakarta, paving the way for Korean firms to participate in building digital infrastructure. Jokowi says initial construction work on the capital was underway during a visit there last month. Aside from this, we have also initiated cooperation in the development of new capital city of Nusantara in the fields of construction, drinking water supply system, and capacity building in the construction of a smart city. Meanwhile, Yun says South Korea can share its experience from building the administrative city of Sejong, which was officially launched in 2012. The two countries initially signed an agreement in 2019 to work together on the ambitious $32 billion project under which Indonesia will relocate its capital to Nusantara on Borneo. The revised agreement was made during a summit between South Korean President Yoon suk Yeol and Indonesian President Joko Widodo in Seoul. The new agreement laid the groundwork for our companies to actively contribute to building the new Indonesian capital's infrastructure, electronic government and smart city systems. The Indonesian leader also says he had pushed for investment partnerships with Korea, particularly in the development of electric vehicles in Indonesia, including an integrated battery industry project with the mining and automotive steel industries. Malaysia says Myanmar execution make a mockery of ASEAN peace plan. This is Malaysia condemns the Myanmar's junta execution of four pro-democracy activists, describing the action as a crime against humanity and a mockery of a regional peace plan. Myanmar's military, which seized power in a coup last year, confirmed the country's first executions in decades, accusing the activists of aiding terror acts by a civilian resistance movement. It takes place about less than two weeks after the special envoy visited Nepido, and just about a week before the ASEAN foreign ministers meeting in Phnom Penh. 
So we look at it that as if the junta is making a mockery of the five-point consensus, and I think we really have to look at this very, very seriously. It is a blatant Malaysian Foreign Minister Saifuddin Abdullah questioned the timing of the executions, which came a week before a meeting between the ASEAN. The 10-member bloc, which has also condemned the executions, had been pushing for Myanmar to adhere to a five-point peace plan it agreed to last year. A Japanese filmmaker friend detained in Myanmar calls for his release. A close friend of Japanese filmmaker Toru Kubota, who was recently detained by Myanmar authorities, calls for his release. The Japanese government has confirmed that the Japanese man in his 20s was detained while filming a demonstration in Yangon but declined to identify the man. Kubota's housemate, 25-year-old actor Seijiro Kono, told Reuters that he wanted the Japanese government demand, in the strongest possible terms, the independent documentary maker's release. As a documentary filmmaker, Thor has often been to risky places in the past. As a joke, I've said things like, make sure you come back alive before, but I didn't think something like this would really happen. Rather than feeling really shocked, I started to wonder what I could do to help. According to Kono, 25-year-old Kubota has previously traveled to Myanmar to document the Rohingya refugee crisis and still has friends in the country. According to the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners, an activist group that since the military seized power in Myanmar in February 1st last year, nearly 15,000 have been arrested and 11,820 remain in detention. Myanmar Junta chief will extend emergency rule for six months. The state media informs the head of Myanmar's junta, Ming Ohlein, will extend the state of emergency in the country for a further six months. The junta's National Defense and Security Council had given its approval. Myanmar has been in chaos since the coup, with conflict spreading across the Southeast Asian country after the army crushed mostly peaceful protests in cities. <laughs> We made utmost efforts in discharging the state duties with might and main, but internal and external terrorists and their conspirator persons and organizations are committed to the utter devastation rather than the flourishing of democracy in Myanmar. He adds the junta had taken power because of voting vote in November 2020 general election that was easily won by Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi's party. Election monitoring groups found no evidence of mass fraud. Chinese army enhances military training to combat readiness. The 80th Group Army of the Chinese People's Liberation Army has launched its summer sea field training to enhance soldiers' military readiness and its standardized training programs at sea in East China Shandong Province. Soldiers are conducting the seasonal training at sea to enhance combat capabilities and develop multitasking skills. In addition, soldiers also received professional training to learn how to use weapons, helicopters, rubber boats, and first aid kits. The training covers both basic and special skills. Every army member needs to be able to swim and handle search and rescue operations after this training season. Meanwhile, soldiers will learn emergency rescue skills and survival skills in the deep sea area. We will further improve commander's leadership via trainings, as well as soldiers' physical capabilities and military readiness, laying a solid foundation for military multitasking. multitasking. Land forces need to meet a high standard level of performance at sea to effectively respond to hazardous and life-threatening conditions in the water. Thank you for having joined us during today's program. We'll see you again soon. Have a nice weekend. Stay safe and stay healthy.